So this is the computer drawing that Crispin made to cut out the pieces of my gears. And this is full scale, and these markings on the side of, of this circle indicate where I need to drill holes in the sides to put the pegs in. So since it's full scale drawing, I'm going to line up the wheel with the drawing and then make marks where there's marks on the paper so I know where to drill the holes. So now that I've made all the marks along the bottom, I'm going to turn it over. Make sure that I have it lined up. Straight. And I'm going to make marks along the bottom. Just like I made marks all along the top. So now that I've made all the marks, I'm going to turn it on its side. Take a straight edge. Now that all my lines are marked, I'm going to take it down to the drill press and get to drilling. So I have my wheel with the lines marked in where I need to have each hole. And I've made a little jig where I have this piece of wood that's got a line on it that shows the path that the drill bit will take. And I previously, although I've already drilled a couple holes, marked the center of this line and clamped down the um, the clamp what's this called? A vise. <laughs> clamp down the vise so that it's positioned properly so that we'll drill in the center. Nailed the wheel to the jig and now I should just need to rotate the wheel to drill each hole. So I glued all the pieces together for the spoke wheel and the cage gear and then I mocked up this piece of wood with um, a hole in it and this one just has a nail so that I could figure out exactly how far apart these need to be for the gears to function properly. And I think this is just about a good distance apart. So then I took this all apart and measured the distances. And these pieces here are the pieces that are going to make up the um, frame to hold my gears. And this will be the bottom piece. And then there will be two side pieces like this. So I have the two holes that I need to drill for the wooden axles that will go through the cage gear and through the spoke gear. So I need to drill these holes and then attach the axles to these boards once I put the boards together and then I think we'll be in business. So this is the first cage gear that I made and after making it and gluing it together I started playing around with how the cage gear and the spoke gear were going to fit on the final frame of my spooling machine and I realized that this cage gear was going to stick out quite a lot and that the rods in between didn't need to be so long. So I went ahead and made a 
second cage gear and um, spokes are much shorter. Now this one's not glued together so I just wanted to show how I glued this one together and it's really really sturdy and the reason why I made the second one is because I realized there was no way I was going to get this one apart to be able to cut these. So the spoke gear has 18 spokes on it and I'm just using wood glue. And rolling the end in the wood glue and pushing it in. So now that I have the bottoms glued in, now I have to glue the top on. And the easiest way is going to be for me to dip these in glue. And the reason why I'm getting kind of a lot of glue on them is there's a little bit of play between the hole and the spoke. And I want to make sure that there's glue in there up along the sides of each of the spokes. Just have to play around with these until I get the spokes lined up with the holes. There we go. That just went in. And now I'm going to let that dry. So this is my finished spooling machine with the two clockwork mechanism gears. There's the bottom gear, which I'm calling the spoke gear because it has little spokes off of it, and the cage gear. This is the smaller cage gear that I made second. Um, this first cage gear would have been very long. Um, it would have worked just fine, but I think it's more of a compact design with the shorter gear. And the frame is very simple. It's just three pieces of wood with screws in the bottom. And then there's the two rods that turn when the machine works. And then there's the handle to turn the bottom rod. So this handle turns the bottom rod, which turns the spoke gear, which turns the cage gear which turns the top rod and my soap bobbin, which is on top of it. So I will show you. Okay, so here is the machine working. And it's about a two to one ratio. So for every time I turn the spoke gear, the cage gear turns twice. And it actually works really well. So, that's my clockwork mechanism silk spooling machine that I made. And I think it was really fun to make. And thank you for everybody who helped me out with it.